Okay, my last video that I'm gonna make here is to talk about how to reprogram your um, Sunny Island to have a different battery capacity. So in order to do this, you wanna be in the standby to start mode. You do not wanna be started. So for those of you that it's currently on, you wanna hit and hold and press escape and then it'll do and turn off. When it's in this state, no, it's not inverting any electricity, so there's no power going anywhere. You basically just kill that puppy right there. And you could kill the slave as well. And you have to wait a second. Basically, these little uh, displays will fade away. It takes about 10 or 15 seconds. Now, when you turn this on, it's going to give you a splash screen. It'll say SMA, blah, blah, blah. But at some point, it's going to come up and it's going to say to a knit, press enter or press and hold enter. So I'm going to show you that as we do this. Now, it is my intention to press and hold enter when we get in there. So I'm now going to power this on. And you can see that it's going to be talking here. It's going to do the boot screen, SMA splash screen. And there, right about now. So I'm holding enter to a knit. The three beeps means I have now gone into a knit mode. Now when I'm in a knit mode, I have several options. I can go to the start menu, which just means it's just going to start the system. The next one is I want to recommission this entire device. If, if you're changing the device on how it's being wired or how it's going to behave, you do new system. Come down, there's new battery. And the last item is an emergency charge. This is a uh, this is an option to be able to restart it and force it to go into an emergency charge mode. But again, you have to have external power ready for that. And then the last item is start system. Oh, I guess it rebooted, it took us up to the top. Okay, so I'm gonna go to new battery. Now when I hit enter, it's gonna ask me a number of questions. And I'm gonna say, okay. Now, by default, it changed the type of battery. These solar trailers have FLA, which is fluid lead acid. So you need to hit enter once on this item, and you're gonna see this little cursor start to blink right there. Okay, now it's blinking, so now I can change it. FLA, uh, nickel, metal, hydride, whatever, and then uh, lithium ion, and then other. I want FLA. That's what all these solar trailers are going to want unless you have, unless you're putting on a different battery. They're pretty much all FLA. Hit enter. Okay. Now I'm going to go down. The next question is going to be 48 volt. All these are, should be 48 volt by default. That's why it's there. You can change that a little bit. If for some reason you are bypassing a couple bad cells in one of your batteries or, well, you'd have to do both your batteries, but if you were bypassing some bad or dead cells, you can drop this by two volts for each cell you, you uh, eliminate from your battery. And that can drop you down to, um, I think the lowest it can go is three cells. So it'd take you down to 40, 44, uh, 42 volts, okay? And then this is the battery capacity nominal. Okay, now this is where that interesting little math needs to be done. I'm gonna, I'll do that in another video to discuss why this is so different. But for right now, this trailer has on it the classic, uh, you can't see it, but they're the classic 510 GMB batteries. And the C20 rating of those batteries is actually uh, 598. So I'm gonna hit enter. So now I'm changing the cursor and I'm gonna hit up arrow and let that spin. Hopefully you can see this on the video. I'm gonna let this spin all the way up to 1296. Or sorry, 1196. Okay, now again, 1196, if you divide that in half, it comes out to be 598, and doing some funky magic on the 510 amp hour battery, which I'll do in another video, 
it explains why the 510 amp hour of a C6 is equivalent to an 1196 amp hour uh, for the Sunny Island. Okay, so go ahead and confirm that. Yes. And now, it, if you hit down arrow, it says init battery start. So now when I hit start, and I'm gonna say yes, it is now starting up the system, initializing it, saving all the, the settings and parameters. And when you do this, if you, uh, in an earlier video, I showed that this trailer was 100% battery SOC. By default, it resets it to 50%. That's just part of what it does because it doesn't know the state of the battery. And so that way it can, it can slowly um, uh, charge it up and then eventually get to know where, where the battery state of charge needs to be. There's a couple things I want to show you here. If I hit the down arrow and go to meters and then I go into battery meters, you can see that the battery state of charge is 49.9 and that's because I just did a new battery. Now, if I keep hitting down arrow, that's the voltage of the battery, and that's the charge voltage, that's where we'd be charging it to. Keep going down. Um, now, the battery current, battery, the total battery current, I'm gonna, we're gonna have to program that in this video. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna fix that. And then the battery temp, you can see there, and the remaining time, let's see, there was another reason I was bringing you in. Oh, right here, battery state of, charge error, the bat, bat SOC error. This is currently at 50%. So if you add this plus the 50% of the current battery state of charge, you are at 100%. So over the course of the next week, this battery state of charge error will slowly drop down to zero as the, um, mid, as the uh, Sunny Islands learn the battery and get to know the current state uh, charge state. Now there's two things that we need to change real quick. Uh, and I will show you that in this video. The first thing is we need to change how many amps can go into the battery. Um, so in order to do that, I actually have to go all the way to the top, hit down arrow to go into settings. We're going into the installer mode, which you go all the way down to password settings, or, and then you hit enter. You add those numbers up, which is gonna be three plus seven plus six plus seven, that's 17. So as I hit this up arrow and enter 17, oops, one too many. You'll see this level zero go to level one. We're now in installer mode. I can escape all the way back up. Now I'm gonna hit down arrow to go into settings. I wanna to go to battery settings, battery property, and we're gonna confirm that it's fluid lead acid. It's 1196 amp hours, everything here looks good. The max, oh, remember, so in another video, I just changed this, but the battery temp max is 45 degrees. I'm gonna change that to 50, just because if the sun's shining on the case, sometimes it can do a false hit. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that, yes. Now I'm going to hit down here, this battery temp uh, sensor, this is more of a warning. So I'm gonna change this to be 45 degrees. So I don't want it to warn me about a hot battery temp sensor until I'm at 45 degrees Celsius. And now um, I am looking for, so I'm gonna escape out of the uh, battery properties and I'm gonna hit down arrow in menu 222, which is battery charge mode. Now in here, I wanna point out this battery charge current max for some dumb reason, whenever you do a new battery, it wants to pick the middle point of this amp hours. It's just insane. You're never gonna charge your battery that much. So I recommend for a double battery that you do 185, 180, something like that. We'll, we'll, we'll do one, uh, we'll run this number all the way down to 180. So you're saying right there, don't ever push more than 180 amps to the batteries when charging. Okay, now, if you are decommissioning a battery and you're going down to half of a battery, you would want this to be cut in half, which is 180 divided by two, which is 90 amps, okay? So you, you never wanna push more than 90 amps to your battery if you only have one battery, but because we have two batteries, we can double that to be 180. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept that, yes. And now, the last thing that we need to do is I need to, let's see, 
go to the battery protection. No, battery current sensor. Because we changed the battery, um, we also have, uh, it, it's forgotten about the, uh, the current sensor. The current sensor is this guy right here. This is the shunt. Now I have another video on how to program this effectively. I recommend that you go look at this. Um, there's, there's a proper way to do this. You have to take this case off and you have to short a wire and then you short it out and stuff. Um, as, a, as a shortcut, this is something I've been doing. So in here, uh, it's always recommended that you turn off number five last. So I will kill one and two Wait a couple seconds, then I'll kill two, uh, two, uh, three and four. And then I will now kill the midnight charge controller. And when I do this, you'll see that the midnight charge controller will shut off. Here we go. So here's number five, boom. And there I lost my midnight charge controller, okay? Now the reason I need to turn him off is that in order to program the temp sensor, we want to be as close to zero as possible. And zero, I mean by how many watts or amps that are coming in or out of the battery. So by turning off that um, midnight charge controller, it's not pulling any power. The slave is still off, if you remember. And then if your trailer has lights, which this one does, um, you can kill breaker number six. In fact, you can kill breaker six anytime. It doesn't really matter. At this point, the only thing on this trailer that is pulling power is this guy right here. And he doesn't pull very much power to be powered up. So while he's in this state, where everything is off, I'm gonna come in here and I need to set up the battery current sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and, this is menu item 225, and hit enter. And now item number one is battery current sensor type says none. So this is no good. We need to tell it that there's a shunt, which is right here. So you're gonna hit enter once. That's gonna make this little cursor down here start blinking. You hit the down arrow. We want 50 millivolts, not if there's, there's a 60 millivolt in there. We want 50 millivolts. Go ahead and hit enter and confirm, yes. And now we hit down arrow. And right here, this is 100 amps with the 50 millivolt. Now, in theory, I think this is how many amp hours we are, but because we never get over a certain amount, this shunt is only rated for so much. And so as we hit enter, right there, you can now see that I'm flashing on that little cursor. So if I hit up the up, the up arrow, I'm changing the 100 amp hours. And according to SMA's tech, who uh, gave me this instructions, he said 500 is what we want. So I'll go to 500. And some, some sunny islands actually will reset when you get up there. Um, this technically looks like it could take me all the way up to 1,000, but we're going to go to 500 just because that's what they recommended. I'm going to hit enter, confirm, yes. Okay, so now I've, I've defined it and I've set its rating. Now if you hit down arrow again, it now has option number four, which is bat cur auto calibrate. We need to calibrate the shunt. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And I'm gonna hit. So now that the cursor is blinking, I hit the down arrow and it says start. Okay. Hit enter, it says, are you sure? Yes. And it just calibrates, it's that fast. Now, while it's doing the auto calibration, that's when we wanna have everything on the trailer shut off for the exception of this one device and then, my other video, I actually move a wire in here and short it out so that it will not account for the power that this guy's pulling. But I found it's so close that it, it seems to be okay. So now we're gonna escape out. And I'm gonna show you something here. Uh, if we hit the down arrow and we go to meters and I go down to battery, which is 120, and I do battery state of charge. No, we want to come down to the battery current sensor right there. So battery, so it's total battery current, which is uh, version number or uh, item number six in here. You can see it's bouncing between two and three, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. That's how many amps this sunny island is taking. Now I'm going to turn on 
Now, when you turn on your midnight charge controller, you want it to go on number first, which is number breaker number five. So this time I'm leaving these off and I'm turning on breaker number five. That will boot up our midnight charge controller. Now, while he's booting, I'm gonna bring you over here and I'm gonna show you that this now is floating around point three. It's a solid point three, okay? Uh, and that's, this is showing, oh, it dropped to point two there for a second. This is the battery current sensor. Oh, it touched 0.04. This is now showing how much power is coming off the battery to run these two devices. Now I'm gonna turn on breakers one and two because this is booted. The thing to remember is that you never wanna change these two breakers. These two are sacred unless this guy is powered on. You never wanna change them unless he's powered on. So if you're turning everything off, you wanna turn these off first, then turn him off last. If you're going the other direction, you're turning everything on, you wanna turn him on first, then you flip this guy up. And I always wait a couple seconds because there's gonna be a burst of energy coming in. And now I'll go ahead and turn that guy up. Now I wanna show you what's really cool here. We'll give this a second to finish booting and it'll start noticing. Now, just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna rotate these into normal position. Okay, I've rotated the panels to maximize our, our harvesting capability. And there's a reason for this. If we come down and we look at the midnight charge controller, I want you to look there. You can see that it is, the battery is currently 57.8 volts and there's 30 amps going onto the battery from the midnight charge controller. Now, if I come over here and I look at this, what do you see here? 29.2 amps. This is gonna be really close to this on the amps. That tells you that your battery current sensor has been set up, initialized, calibrated, and is working well. It's never quite exact, and the reason why this is important is if you're ever pushing power and you're connected to the grid, the Sunny Island is smart enough to realize that there's excess power and it, nothing's going to the battery and we don't wanna have any power go back to the grid. So this helps the Sunny Island to track what the, what the true state of charge is on the battery. So this is gonna to continue to push 30 amps throughout the day during the solar day. And then over the course of several days, my battery state of charge error will eventually start dropping. In fact, we can go look at my battery state of charge error is still 50%, but each time I cycle, that will drop as it pulls power off the battery and pushes it back on. So at this point, you're now ready to start your system. Uh, we need to turn on our slave, because remember we had him off this whole time. And the slave also will do that init menu, but you never, you know, you never need to change the slave. So eventually he's gonna come up and say, waiting for master. All right, there we go. Oh, let's see, it's doing the memory card. Let's see. All right, it says ready, waiting for master. So now when we come over here and I start this, 